Check his blood pressure. Hey, don't play games with us, Toretto. You're in serious trouble. You don't want serious trouble going through these straps. Draw some blood. What, you think this is a joke? You're finished. Do you understand? I don't understand anything. Who are you, people? There's need a lot of money. Toretto, unless you want to... Unless you want to end up in federal prison for the rest of your life, start talking. I want a drink. Talk first. I want a drink. He needs some liquids. His electrolytes have been depleted. Get him some water. Get him some bourbon. Get him some bourbon! What's your name? Hey, we asked the questions here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, if you don't show me some ID or give me a name to put me in a talking mood, I'm gonna dummy up pretty quick. It all started yesterday. It's 24 hours ago. Seems like a lifetime. It was hot. And it was really, really hot. One of my guys and me, we were finishing up some paperwork in their office. The air conditioning was broke down. It was like working in the steam room. Yeah. You know what I like about working in Vegas in the summer? <laughs> Not a damn thing. That's right. What do you say we go over to Angie's and knock down a couple of real nice cold? No, I'd really like to, but I don't have any time. I told Ann we'd taken a movie tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Was this uh, something that I should know about? It's in there if, uh, if anything happens and I need a backup, I'll let you know. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Are you Michael Torello? Mm-hmm. I was hoping you could spare a few moments. Mm-hmm. Does that mean yes? Mm-hmm. the air conditioning. Went off this morning. Usual? Yeah, with a lot of ice. And for my friend, uh... Milan. Milan Hartwell. Bourbon. Neat. Gotcha. Bourbon? My father says there's only two drinks worth your time. Bourbon and, uh... Bourbon on the rocks. What else does your father say is worth your time? He didn't. He trusted me to decide for myself. Do you? Always. 
your father sounds like a very, very smart man. He is. No one was. There's a big difference. That's why I'm here, Mr. Torello. I'm not sure which it is. I think my father's in a lot of trouble. Sergeant Altwin at the police department said you could probably help me. Well, what does Artman think that I can do that he can't do? Well, he said all he could do was file a missing persons report, and he couldn't do that till tomorrow. He told me you were in charge of a special unit assigned to organize crime. Yeah. Well, I believe my father needs help. Milan told me that she was afraid her father was in serious trouble. She wasn't able to reach him at work or at his home. And she told me that he often borrowed large amounts of money. I wonder if he borrowed them from legit sources. It smelled to me that he might be involved with the outfit. She was afraid that he might be hurt, and I really couldn't argue with that. I wanted to help her. My father's a good man. But he has a problem. I thought he'd stopped, but the last couple of months he's been worried, distracted. The last time I was here, a couple of men came to visit him. They took him outside to talk. I've never seen my father so, so shaken before. Thank you. He wouldn't tell me what they talked about, just that it was business. I think it's this business. A 20 grand worth of markers signed by Bobby Meeker. Well, who is Bobby Meeker? He's a juice man. I'm sorry? Oh, he's a guy that lends money to gamblers at a high rate of interest. Gamblers? Yeah. Oh, I see. My mother divorced my father because he was a gambler. He'd worked really hard to stop it. He... <laughs> Looks like he didn't work hard enough. Would you help me, Mr. Torello? I really need it. Please? Yeah, sure. All of Hartwell's markers were made out to a creep named Bobby Meeker, a loan shark. The desert around Las Vegas is called the world's largest unmarked graveyard, and half the guys they find are there because they didn't pay up on markers to guys like Meeker. What's the matter, Mike? You forgot how to take a night off? No, I got lonely. <laughs> Damn, your time into something else. You know what that is? Don't tempt me. <laughs> that is the thickness of the prettiest little T-bone you ever want to see. Charred on the outside, rosy on the center. And it was that close to my mouth. You know something? As soon as the phone rang, I knew who it was. <laughs> so what's happening? A guy named Hartwell and Bobby Meeker. What's Mika got to do with this? I don't know, but that's what we have to find out. Come on. I sent Danny back to Hartwell's place to watch Milan in case she got restless. For some reason, I was worried about her. I mean, really worried about her. Nate and Joey started looking into the backgrounds of Milan and Hartwell. I took Clemens with me, and we headed over to a joint I knew Mika worked out of. Strictly low rollers and busted dreams. Hey, Mike. It's been a long time. How you been? Okay, fine. How are you? Yeah, Say hello to Walter Clements. Hey, Walter. Okay. Oh. You got a few minutes, I have to talk to you. Yeah, sure. Sammy, take over, huh? A friend of mine needs me. Whoa. Listen, Tiny, you seen that creep maker? Yeah, he ain't been around. 
Well, it's funny, because I was just thinking about him, too. You know, I should have done the world a favor and stuffed him in a blender when I had a chance. Nasty little rag. He don't deserve to live. Don't worry, he won't. Tiny, we have to find out where he does his heavy work. Now, listen to me. Tiny, where he takes his customers who have to be taught a lesson. You know what I mean? Huh? Leo, haul him up. You're three months behind on your payments. I'm gonna pay you, Bobby. I just need a little time. Nah, nah, nah. You had time. You had plenty of time, huh, Will? Now, time's run out. Mr. Carp? That hurt, Frank? Now you give me what's mine. Well, all you're going to know from now until you die is pain. I don't have it, Bobby. It's the car. Ah, I can get it. I can get it. I get something worth more. A lot more, Bobby. I have it with me. How much more? It's big, Bobby. It's real big. I've been working on it for months. You're not going to believe it. Hartwell wasn't lying after all. Thanks. It ain't dangerous, is it? Hey, do you think Hartwell would be hauling this stuff around if it was dangerous? Well, what are we gonna do with it? Mr. Carp, do you know what this stuff is worth to the right people, huh? What we need is somebody to handle this for us. Somebody who's connected all the way to the top. What we need is Ray Luca. We got one. Now, let's finish our business with Hartwell. thing I could think of was how I was going to tell Milan. Hey, 
I sent the rest of the guys home. I figured I can take care of what had to be done all alone. Everything so far pointed to what Milan had thought had happened, but I still wasn't convinced. Killing Hartwell just didn't make sense. Meeker was not the kind of guy to wash 20 big ones down the drain, unless he was already holding a better hand. She was a teacher. He was a pilot. One of the flying tigers. I was born during the war. My father brought us to England after the war when I was six. Back home, I'd always eaten with chopsticks. I remember my first day at school. There was a spoon and a fork. I didn't know how to use them. Everybody laughed at me. I ran home crying. And My father held me and told me to remember that I was half Chinese. And the Chinese don't cry. Then when I was 12, I fell off my roller skates. I broke my arm. My father brought me to the hospital while they fixed it. It hurt so much. But I was half Chinese, so I didn't cry. Those men who killed my father are still out there. Check on that all-points bulletin on Meeker. Then check every place we've ever seen him in, dives, bars, whatever. And make sure you guys check the airport, bus stations, and train stations, too. According to my autopsy, Mr. Frank Hartwell died of a bullet through his brain. Mm-hmm. 
So what's the big surprise? Why don't you tell me on the phone? The big surprise is this. What the hell is that? Somewhere, somehow, Mr. Hartwell came in contact with radioactive material. A lot of radioactive material. When he got shot through the head, he was already a dead man. He just didn't know it. Well, how is that possible? I don't know, Mike, but however he did it, he got a massive dose, and it's got to be found. Because if it continues to leak, I'm going to need a lot of help at the morgue. Suddenly, my simple little murder case had exploded in my face, and it made no sense at all. As far as I knew, the only way to get too close to radiation in Las Vegas was to rub up against a showgirl. What are you bringing this to me for, Bobby? You trying to set me up? Holy check him. Don't have to do that. All right. Ray, you know better than this. He's clean. You're the only one I know, Ray, with the class to handle this kind of stuff. Cut the crap, get to it. Ray, this, this stuff is worth millions to the right country. Millions and millions, Ray. It's not worth jack to me, Bobby. Sure it is, Ray. It's worth anything you want to make of it. Hey, Meeker, you sound like you're desperate to make a sale. You can write your own ticket with me, Ray. I'm not interested. Take a hike. Hey, come on, you and me. Ray, anything you want, anything. Get out of here. Ray! On the other hand, maybe something can be done with this. You got some calls to make, Counselor. Billy. Thanks. So? So, I just got off the phone with our man in the State Department. People there have no objection. Do you want to deal with Minka? You got the green light, Ray. Seems they don't care if the Chinese get the H-bomb or not. Apparently, they're only a year away anyway. As long as I get my air routes over the Shan Mountains, I don't care who has it. A rep from the People's Republic will be in touch, a rep with full authority to deal for their government. <laughs> we just fixed our first country, Mr. Attorney. Come a long way from Taylor Street, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, David. Remember this when you were a kid? Nice toss. Thanks. Not bad, not bad. How did you figure it? How did you figure that the feds would go for this? I got a knife. Guy I'm in a beef with's got a knife. Now, how's he gonna feel if all of a sudden he sees somebody else standing next to him with the knife? Nervous. China's got a knife. Russia gets very nervous, and they worry less about us. It's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. You know what international politics is, David? It's the street. It's just the same as the street. What are you, a hustler? We're Nate and Joey. Running down some background on Hartwell. 
All right, listen, I want you guys to put together a list of every place in the state that handles radioactive material, and I want everything we got on Hartwell as soon as you get it. Listen, Tiny Gagliasso called. He said he spotted Meeker and one of his goons. Uh, Meeker got away, but uh, Tiny grabbed one of the goons and sort of made a uh, <laughs> citizen's arrest. <laughs> See you later. I got a call from Tiny. It seems that one of Meeker's guys wandered in looking and feeling pretty sick. Tiny spontaneously decided to make a citizen's arrest. I gotta tell you something about Tiny's citizen's arrest. They probably violate a half a dozen city, state, and federal statutes against unlawful detention, bodily harm, and kidnapping. But on the other hand, Hey, Mike. I don't know where else to take them. We don't open till five. I figured this would be okay. <laughs> to your son of a... Hey, this is a friend of mine, cop. And you ain't gonna do nothing but be nice to me. Now tell him where Mika stashes his merchandise. The neon... Graveyard. Excellent police work, Tiny. Excellent police work. dark and it was no sign. I found it. Lucky me. sudden I got these guys in white suits all over the place. I was looking around for the flying saucer they fell out of. But they were from the Atomic Energy Commission and they weren't kidding. I was expecting something else. Bobby, another one of these. What's the matter? I'll loosen you up. So, is it an old Chinese custom to send women to do the dirty work? There's nothing dirty about working for Chairman Ma, Mr. Luca. And contrary to your corrupt value system, we don't discriminate between the sexes. If I'm so corrupt, maybe you shouldn't have anything to do with me. I detest you, Mr. Luca. You prey on men's weaknesses. You're a parasite. And one day you'll be wiped out forever. But for now, I'm forced to deal with you and offer you the only thing that means anything to you, money. I'm not interested in money. Oh, really? How un-American. I want certain concessions from your government concerning future business dealings in the area called the Golden Triangle. What sort of concessions? Available trade routes, 
air rights, and the freedom to operate flights through Chinese airspace over Yunnan province without any interference. You're asking a great deal, Mr. Luca. I'm offering a great deal. The AEC recaptured the container. How are you going to get it out of the plutonium plant? That's none of your business. All I need from you is a guaranteed passage out of the country. It can be arranged. Lieutenant Torello. I'm an agent with the Department of Justice, okay? He's not hot anymore. I suppose you give me some answers. What kind of answers? What is this place? Sure, Terrell, you ask the questions and uh, we'll roll over. Because you have a JD shield. Let me tell you something, pal. I don't care what kind of ID you got. You make 16 dollars a year and you had your hands on something that would have put you on easy street for the rest of your life. Now think about it, Torello. What would you have done if you were in our position? Pray that I don't get loose. Take off the restraints. Take off the restraints? Now. How do you do? I'm Bert Hinshaw, federal agent. Yeah, so what? I'm sorry about the rough stuff, but we had to be sure. I talked to Justice. Hallahan says that the attorney general himself would vouch for your story. You checked me out? Uh, you're a pretty popular guy. Now, I got a couple of your bulls down my office right now. I put some babysitters on them, but they say that won't keep them from tearing this place apart if I don't spring you. Oh, and I got a call a couple of minutes ago that your girlfriend is out by the main gate looking for you. My girlfriend? Yeah. Milan? You guys better have a doctor check her out, too. She may have been exposed to this stuff. It was in her father's car. Take care of it. What's this all about, Henshaw? Come with me. Now, you listen to me. You got exactly 10 seconds to pick up that phone and dial the Department of Justice. You got five seconds. What are you, dead for us? You're stupid. Pick it up! This is a top secret government facility used to process uranium-238 into plutonium-239. Weapons grade plutonium, enough in each of those rods to equal 100 times the destructive power at Hiroshima. In its raw state, it's not explosive. It needs further processing and a special detonating device for that. However, a single rod could put any nation on Earth into the nuclear flood.
Do you think I could have some water, please? I've been cooped up here for quite a while. I'll stay right here on the bed. Honest. Up ahead are the loading docks, where we ship the canisters and cargo vans. From here, they go to the warhead assembly plants, where they stick them in the nose cones of ICBMs. Till yesterday, Hartwell was deputy security chief here. Now he's disappeared with 10 pounds of plutonium. finally got the stuff on Hartwell. Yeah? Yeah, well, he had a daughter all right, but she's dead. What? She died in China back in 47 when she was three years old. Well, if his daughter's dead, then who in the hell is this girl in this building? Come on. Nate, Joey, check the front gate. Please, I got kids. Do as I say and you'll live to see them. So it gets to be about 10.30 and he don't call. He calls when he closes so I can come down and get the cash. So we don't get in no trouble taking it to the night deposit. Uh, what am I gonna tell his mother? Owner says she took one of the cars from the garage, uh, yellow 60 Merc, Nevada plates, A69, 728. Yeah, he called it. Poor bastard. Thought he was just going for another ride. He's not the only one. You want roadblocks, Mike? No, but what I do want is a list of every airstrip within a 25-mile radius and see if we got anything on the all-points bulletin we put on on Meeker. Torello, what are you doing here? My job. It's AC business. We'll handle it from here. Like you handled everything else? We don't need your help, Torello. Don't Take talk away. to me, porcupine head. Look, Henshaw, you operate a nuclear facility that's about as easy to get into as a bridge club. You also have a woman out here somewhere with enough plutonium to turn this whole state into a scar. Now, I suggest that you set up roadblocks within a 20-mile radius and that you do it pretty damn quick. Yeah. What's up, Mike? I thought you didn't want roadblocks. I don't, but I don't want Henshaw around either. We have to find that woman before she flies out of here, and I mean it right now. That's right. No, no, it's yellow. A yellow car. Yellow! Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I said Mercury. Mercury. Like in the planet? No, look, lady, I don't own one either. Just look in the parking lot. Damn it. Mike, we've called every airport in the area, and some she couldn't even get to in 24 hours. Well, then she's got to be using a private airstrip, Danny, and take it off from the desert hard pack. Yeah. But how do we know from where? And who the hell knows when she's leaving? Mike, it's the state police. They found Meeker. There 
Peters. Hanging around on the roof. We'd have been happy to bring him in for you. That's all right. We prefer to talk to him here. Thanks a lot. Nice work. Company's well named. In my country, the Golden Dragon is a sign of success. You know, Bobby, every time I see you, you're in some kind of trouble. Now let's try it again, shall we? Where is she? I had a deal with Luca, okay? I don't know where the girl is. <laughs> All right. Bobby? What? Bobby! What? You hang around here. We're gonna be back later to lock you up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Torello, can we take him down? <laughs> <laughs> Meeker got aced out of the deal, but he never knew the girl. However, he told us that he had made a deal with Ray Luca. That was enough. He didn't have to tell us much more. I've got to get the cargo there. My people are waiting for the plane. Is it possible? If we fly low, maybe. Otherwise, radar will pick us up. Then fly low. That's where I need to go. My people will have a plane waiting there. Well, if your people don't show, I hope you like your keel. <laughs> Let's go. a few moments. Mm -hmm. Does that mean yes? Would you help me, Mr. Trial? Please. I really need it. When I was a little girl, the Japanese left my village in ruins. Then the Russians came. They left my father dead. We need the plutonium, Michael. 
I really didn't want to like you. I really didn't. That's why, darling, it's incredible that someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable too. I really didn't want to like her either.